in this video, we're going to show you how to create a scalar diagram as well as to get the simple regression line on the graph. We also will show you how to calculate the correlation coefficient. Let's get to it. Uh, what we have here is two numerical variables, number of radio spots and sales volume. What we want to do is to use a graph to describe these two variables and the relationship. So the way to go about doing it is to use a scalar diagram. To create a scalar diagram, you go to, first of all, you highlight the two, the two variables, and then we go to insert, and then we go to this icon look like a scalar diagram and you click on it and you have various options in terms of what the scalar diagram is look like usually what we do is that we would take the simple one so this is a simple one so it's very really simple uh, what we have here is the scalar diagram here's the x-axis here's the y-axis the x-axis is the first variable uh, the first column so this is the number of radio spots the y-axis is the second column in this case the sales volume and here's the title you can actually obviously change the title uh, you can begin to beautify this graph if you want to but before we do that let's explain to you what a scalar diagram is if you put your mouse over one particular point you can actually see that it says this is point number six and the value is six comma five fifty one point five so six fifty one point five so this the point that we put put to you here represent this point uh, if you put another let's look at the uh, the, the biggest number this is 12 and 118.9 so this point represent this record so by looking by putting these points on the graph we can begin to see whether there is a relationship between the two variable and the nature of the relationship so in this case we can actually draw a straight line through this graph uh, these points and the strict line will represent quite closely the relationship so in this case we would say that these two variable has a linear relationship now we need linear relationship is not necessarily the case in some cases the scalar diagram will show that the relationship is curved this way or the relationship is curved this, this way in this case any linear regression technique that we want to apply to this data set would not be applicable. So let's just summarize. In order for us to summarize the relationship between these two numerical variables, we can use something called the scalar diagram to do it. And basically we take each pair of the points and we put it into the xy axis using the first column as the x axis the y the second column as the y axis and after we put all the points on this x y axis we can begin to see the pattern right now when we look at this pattern there are three things we are looking for first of all we look at the direction right so in this case we want to see whether you know when x go up y goes up if x and y move in the same direction we would call it a positive relationship. If X and Y go in opposite direction, we will call it a negative relationship. The second thing we look at, of course, is the form. Right? In this case, the form of the relationship is a straight line. In fact, what we can do is we can begin to draw this line out. Now, Excel can help you in put a line to together. So if you click right click on the points and you can see that there is a menu item called add trend line if you click on it 
here's the invisible line that we're talking about. So by looking at this trend line, you can see that the points are scattered around this trend line quite closely. So that brings us to the third feature that we were looking at is the how close are the points to the lines or the strength of the relationship. So now, uh, so three things that we're looking for. One is the form, whether it's a straight line or not. The second thing you look at is the direction, whether X and Y go in the same direction and opposite direction. If X and Y go in the same direction, the relationship is positive. Otherwise, the relationship is negative. And in this case, the relationship is positive. Now, there are also, in some cases, the points are all scattered around. And in this case, we would say there's no relationship. The third thing they're looking for is the strength, the strength of the relationship. If the points are all scattered around this regression line, the relationship is strong. Otherwise, the relationship could be moderate or could be weak. Now, uh, one of the things that we can do if we this straight line is that we can also display the equation on the chart, right? So by choosing display equation on chart in this menu, we can now see that the equation of the straight line that we're drawing uh, is on it, right? So if we actually highlight this one, we can move around and so on. Now, the equation of the straight line is in the form of y equal to mx plus b. Now, in statistics, we usually write it as y equal to b plus mx. From a mathematical standpoint, it won't make a difference. The other thing that we can do by if you go back to the to this uh, straight line, we can also put the R square value. The R square value is the coefficient of determination. If you want to use that number to analyze your data, you can check it, and the R square value is then displayed under the equation. Now you can also form the trend line a little bit to make it a little bit better. So by Again, if you actually highlight the trend line and you go to the first uh, icon in the format menu and you choose solid line and uh, you choose the color black, for example, and you choose the format, the dash type as solid and the line will be drawn in a much smaller solid way. Uh, there are other things that you can do. For example, you can actually eliminate those grid lines if you want to. Right? You can add uh, you can add the the name of the x-axis, the name of the y-axis. Suppose I want to name the x-axis. What we can do is we can right-click on the numbers here, and you say format axis, and you can begin to work with the numbers, right? So uh, if I want to make the number a little bit bigger as um, bold, so I can actually do that, or I can actually change the unit and change the display, for example. If I want to have one decimal place display, I can actually choose just like the format number menu, and I can display one decimal place, and that's, also good, okay? Uh, the other thing you can do, of course, is to put the name of the variable underneath the axis. If you wanna do that, you can go up to chart design. Now chart design, once you click on chart design, there are various design you can actually use. Uh, some of them are very really colorful. For example, this one, like this one, and so on. So it depends on what presentation needs you have. You can actually choose those. But if you don't want to, you, you want to put the name of the axis on it, you can go to chart design and then add chart elements, right? So that's the menu that we usually work, work with. So we click on it, we say axis title, and we can add the horizontal title. So in this case, the horizontal title should be number of radios 
board and you can actually format that if you want to by highlighting it and you can actually change the font you can change the sign uh, you can do whatever you need to beautify it okay so that's how you create a graphical representation of this data set so that we can actually look at the relationship or the possible relationship between these two numerical variable. The other thing that you want to do, of course, is to use a number to summarize that relationship. And the number that we use in statistics is called a, a correlation coefficient. And we can use Excel to calculate that. Now, Excel has a function called Core that we can use to do that, okay? So let me just write this down for you. So if we want to calculate the correlation coefficient, and the function that we use is E cosine C O L L E L. And in this function, what you have to specify, as you can see, is array one and array two. Array one represents the x values, and array two represents the y values. Okay, so in this case, x value is in A2 to A24. And then we have comma B2 to B24. Okay, so by entering this function, you can calculate the correlation coefficient for this data set. And the number here is 0 0.97719. Now, uh, so that's the R value. If you square this number, you would get 0 0.9549, right? So for example, if we just do just to check, uh, this is I22, right? And we, we see if we square that number, do we get 0.9549? And you did, we, we, we can see that, right? So that's how these two numbers are related. From a statistical perspective, depends on what you want to do. If you are looking at just the relationship between the two variables, then correlation coefficient probably will be sufficient. But if you want to look at other things like uh, interpretation or testing and so on, R square could be useful as well. So that concludes what we want to talk about today. And uh, in the next module, we're going to show you another way of producing this equation using the data analysis at him. Bye for now.